Yeah, can you close the door? Okay, so quickly recap the things and then I move to the next concept. So what we discussed in the previous classes, we discussed about the corrosion of iron. In particular, why iron will get corroded. So what is the reason for iron to be corroded? Because the iron which has formed from the ores, until unless if you won't supply that much of high energy at temperature of almost 18 to 900 degrees centigrade, iron won't come from iron oxide. So once iron has come from the iron oxide, it will be in the very high energy states. So any component or a matter or a molecule want to lose the high energy. So the tendency of losing high energy for the iron is by reacting spontaneously with the existing species. So that's why iron at the high energy state will try to react with oxygen molecule in presence of water. So that reaction, if we could look at that in a thermodynamic perspective, the Gibbs free energy is supposed to be negative value. So the negative value of the Gibbs free energy tells about the spontaneous. That's why the iron to iron oxide reaction is spontaneous in this type. So that's why you cannot stop because the delta G is negative. Iron quickly forms iron oxide. So during this process, I, I we talk about the mechanism. So what exactly the mechanism of iron corrosion? If you look at probably I could. So what we talk about the uh, mechanism of iron corrosion, basically it starts with the first reaction as iron tending to two, two loose electrons. So Fe gives rise Fe2 plus plus two electrons. Then what is the second reaction in the mechanism steps? Whatever the leftover electrons quickly captured by the oxygen molecule, O2 plus 2H2O plus four electrons to form 4OH minus. So the second main important reaction is formation of OH minus that we call as oxygen reduction reaction. Now after this reaction, what is the third important step? This form the OH minus ion from the second step, we will try to react with the Fe2 plus in the first reaction step to form FeOH twice. Then what is the fourth ultimate step? This FeOH twice will form FeOH thrice. Fine. Now, uh, after FeOH thrice, which is the rusted form of iron, we discussed the exact component involvement in the iron corrosion. Like, we understood the importance of oxygen molecule, we understood the importance of water molecule, we understood the importance of electrons, is it not? So, then we ultimately come to a conclusion, what to be stopped in order to arrest the iron corrosion. So for that, I have given the four cases, case one to case four. So in the case one, what are the ultimate components involved? Whether oxygen molecule is there, whether water molecule is there, fine. So with that, the four cases we understood and ultimately what we come to a conclusion, if we stop arresting giving the oxygen or if we stop giving the water molecule, corrosion will not happen. So that's what we ultimately come to a conclusion from that uh, four cases, is it not? Perhaps it is taking some time in moving the contents. Uh, then what we discussed in the previous class, I given two examples. The first example is corrosion of zinc. Without involvement of oxygen, how zinc will corrode? So the best example is you take some acid solution, perhaps maybe HCl solution, dip the zinc rod. So when you dip zinc rod, what will happen? 
you can see the the, the moment you dip the zinc rod in the hcl solution effervescence of bubbles so what are those bubbles those bubbles are nothing but the hydrogen no as such if you look at the reaction zinc in hcl zinc plus plus 2 hcl forming zinc chloride plus h2 maybe in a first instance we look at it as a chemical reaction but if you could deeply involve in the reaction split into the two parts we can see two oxidation reduction reactions that means this reaction is not a chemical reaction it is an electrochemical reaction because the involvement of electrons and ions are there so what are those two important steps in that ultimate reaction of zinc hydrogen zinc first losing the two electrons zn gives rise zn2 plus plus two electrons now what has happened to these two electrons release they will be quickly captured by the h plus ions because the zinc rod is dipped in the hcl solution where plenty of h plus ions are available so this h plus ions will try to capture the electrons so what we define for reduction reaction accepting electrons is called reduction gain of electrons is called reduction so h plus ions are accepting are gaining the electrons so two h plus plus two electrons gives h2 so ultimately there is a reduction reaction and ultimately there is an oxidation reaction because zinc losing two electrons loss of electrons is called oxidation so one oxidation reaction one reduction reaction going to happen for the zinc carbon. so this is the reaction scheme we discussed and apart from that we discussed about the zinc corrosion in aerated hcl is it not so what is the difference between uh, zinc corrosion in non aerated and aerated cases in aerated hcl that means along with the hcl solution in your beaker if suppose presence of oxygen is there maybe the oxygen bubbles dissolve in the solution or external oxygen species in water maybe if oxygen environment is there in your hcl solution that we call as the aerated hcl now look at the same zinc corrosion in this specific case so what is the case here take a beaker take hcl and presume that along with the hcl you have oxygen molecules now what is going to happen we already know without hcl what is the mechanism is it not yeah these are all the four cases we discussed so what will happen for the uh, uh, aerated hcl case in aerated hcl case your oxygen is present along with the hcl solution so what is the oxygen reduction reaction in case of acid solutions or in case of neutral solutions i have given two reaction schemes o2 plus 2h2o plus 4 electrons gives rise 4oh minus that's in neutral case in acid solutions o2 plus 2h2 plus 2 electrons forming the water molecule so because oxygen is interacting with h plus ions in accepting the electrons so this also oxygen reduction reaction in case of acid solutions that means on one side metal is losing electrons on the other side two reduction reactions are going to happen what is the first reduction reaction going to happen h plus ions capturing the electrons to form h2 standard reduction reaction at the same time because oxygen is also present in this case o2 plus h plus plus electrons there is another reaction another reduction reaction that is also going to happen this is not the case in case of previous previously there is no oxygen molecule but here O2 is there, O2 presence will take the H plus ions and then accept the electrons to form H2O molecule. So one more reduction reaction. Now what we uh, discussed in the previous case, any oxidation and reduction go at a simultaneous pace. The rate of oxidation should be equal to rate of reduction. Now what about the rate of oxidation here? Only one reaction. What is the rate of oxidation in this case? Zinc losing two electrons. So zinc Zn gives rise Zn2 plus plus 2. Only one oxidation. But there are two reduction reactions. What is the first reduction reaction? 2H plus plus 2 electrons gives you H2. And then O2 plus 2H plus 2 electrons gives H2 a molecule. Now how to compensate? Two reduction, only one oxidation. So in order to compensate, whatever the two reduction reactions electrons required. This has to come from the oxidation only. Is it not? For H2 formation, it needs only two electrons. So it captures from the oxidation reaction. 
but for the O2 reduction reaction, it needs some two or four electrons. That also needs to be from the oxidation reaction. That means what? Zinc has to lose at a time six electrons. Two for the first reaction and then four for the second reaction. That means what? Zinc is spontaneously losing more number of electrons in order to balance the two reduction reactions. So consequently what we can say? Zinc is corroding much faster because losing electrons means what? Losing the mass because electron carries some mass. Is it not? So zinc is quickly losing or zinc is corroding very fast compared to the non-aerated HCl solution. In non-aerated HCl solution, there is no involvement of oxygen. So only one reduction reaction, one oxygen reaction, equally balanced. It loses two electrons, it captures two electrons. Fine. But in this case, there are two reduction reactions happening. So because the, the whatever the uh, loss is, the rate of oxidation should be equal to rate of reduction. Both should happen on the same surface at the same rate. So in compensation, zinc will corrode much faster in case of aerated HCl. Fine. Right? So that we understood from the previous class. And in the last class, I ended up with this example where I have given the four specific cases. Case 1, case 2, case 3, case 4. In all the four cases, I asked you in which case the corrosion will be there. If there, what is the rate? So we discussed about the first case. What is the first case? The first case says you take a beaker or a small glass shoe, you dip the nail and keep you pour some water and then close with some uh, nib. That is the case one. What is the case two? You take again the same glass shoe, dip the nail, put the water and then pour some sodium chloride, some salt, add some salt into that and then close the nib. And what is the third case? Take same glass tube, dip your nail, put water and then pour some oil and then close the nib. Last case, take same glass tube, dip the nail, don't pour water. Instead of that, keep calcium chloride salt and close the nib. And what we come to under understand all the four cases, in the first case, if you look at it, we have presence of oxygen, presence of water. So which are essential for? Essential for? Corrosion to take space because we understood the mechanism of corrosion to be four steps. So oxygen essential is needed, water molecule essential is needed and electrons role is there. So nail, what do you mean by nail? Nail is a metal iron. So iron quickly loses two electrons. That's also spontaneous reaction. We already understood the mechanism. So iron will tends to lose two electrons. That two electrons are quickly taken by the oxygen molecule because oxygen molecule is there, water molecule is there. So it tries to corrode. So the first case resembles the corrosion. Now what about the second case? Second case is also corrosion because presence of water is there, oxygen is there. Along with that, sodium chloride is there. So what is the role of sodium chloride? We understood. It's a part of salts, presence of chloride ions, highly oxidizing species. So they try to increase the rate of oxidation, rate of corrosion. So you can see case number two, severity of corrosion is more. That's why if we observe, nail will be get corroded. Also, some of the parts, surface scratches will pull off from the surface to the down. We can see, observe some, some iron powder on the bottom of the tube. Because why you observe the powder of iron, iron powder on the bottom? Because what will happen? If, if you look at this pen, like let us say this is a nail, the surface will tend to go undergo corrosion. So what will happen after prolonged corrosion or the, when the severity of corrosion is more, what will happen? This surface is completely corroded, corroded, corroded. That, is, that, that means what? There is no space for corrosion to took place. Now entire surface is corroded. Now what will happen? Entire surface is corroded means there is no space left for the fresh corrosion to happen. Now what is the usual tendency? This corroded parts, the surfaces, will get try to peel off from the surface from the fresh oxygen supply. So oxygen molecules won't stop. So they try to again interact. 
during that interaction or collision or hindrance, this oxygen species will try to peel off the uh, corroded surfaces. So in that case, whatever the powder form of iron will peel off from the surface, they get deposited on the bottom of the vein or the tube. Okay. Now what is the third case? Case number three. There is no corrosion because water molecule presence is there, but there is no oxygen presence. Because when you when you keep water, quickly I pour some oil. So now this iron, the nail, is not able to react with the oxygen presence that may be at the top of the tube. But because of this layer of oil, which stops penetrating the oxygen to get to enter and react with the iron presence. So we understood absence of either oxygen or absence of water molecule or absence of electrons will stop corrosion. So that is the case, case number three. Completely there is no corrosion. Now what is the last case? Last case. If you look at the last case, there is no water molecule at all. Where could be the corrosion? Absolutely no corrosion because I have purposefully inserted the nail and then I have not poured water. And instead of that, I poured some calcium chloride, which is hygroscopic in nature, which tries to capture or absorb water, water molecules inside the tube. So even there is presence of oxygen, but there is no water molecule. So case number three, case number four, absolutely free of corrosion. But case number one, case number two are corrosion examples. And case number two is specifically enormous rate of corrosion. Is it clear? Now let us look at case number two, little bit in detail. Now what I have done here, case number two, I put the nail in the glass tube. I put some water and I added some salt like sodium chloride. Now think of the case of sodium chloride. Why sodium chloride is enhancing the corrosion rate? Presence of chloride ions, I agree, because chloride ions are highly oxidizing in nature, which tries to enhance. But at the, at the other point, you have to think of the environment or the medium that presents for the passage of electrons and ions. See, ultimately, you, you tell me when corrosion happens, for example, in the first reaction, Fe2 lose two electrons to form, Fe2 plus, fine. Now think of the two electrons formed. Will the two electrons will be in the solution? Can electrons pass in the solution? Can electrons pass in the water? Can electrons pass in the water? If that is the case, we can get shock. When you take, when you put hand in the glass of water, we get shock. No. Electrons won't pass in the water solution or aqueous solutions. Only ionic movement will be there. Is it not? Water can have only ionic conductivity, not electric conductivity. So, when I am saying Fe to lose two electrons, that electrons should travel across the surface of the metal because metals only can make the facilitate the electrons to pass. Only metal can carry the electrons. So, on the surface only electrons can pass. That means what? Electrons are moving in on the surface of the metal. Let us say this case. So, on the surface, electrons are moving, moving. Whenever any HPS ions are available, they can take part. Or the electrons loosen on the surface will capture the HPS ions. All will happen. So, here I want to remind you that the external conducting medium, if it is there, then the corrosion rate will be more. So, that is the case here is the sodium chloride, the ionic movement. Chloride actually here not only oxidizing but chloride ions make facilitate the more ionic movements. Is it not we need ionic movement here? We do want ionic movement or not? Definitely want because H plus ions has to move. In the same case of glass tube, let us assume for some time H plus ions available here only. Can there be corrosion? No, H plus ions has to come to the surface only, is it not? See, my rod, my nail is here, even though I dip in the HCl solution, H plus ions are available, 
But let us assume the H plus ions are in the bulk solution. That means let us say they are on the this extreme side of the tube. More H plus ions are on this side. Very less ions on the surface of the nail. Then again the corrosion will be less. Why I am saying less? Because whatever the electrons loosened by the iron, those two electrons will quickly take the H plus ions which are surrounding onto the nail. That means what? H plus ions should come to the surface rather than sitting here or here or here or here. Are you getting the point or not? So that means what? The H plus ions should travel in the solution and reach ultimately to the surface of the iron. Then only two electrons available on the iron will react to form two H plus plus two electrons to get H2. Here, yeah. that means what? H plus ions should have to move entirely in the bulk solution to come to the surface. Now you tell me H plus ions has to move in the solution means I do want the ionic movement or not. Now these chloride ions will facilitate this ionic movement to be faster. That means what? Conductivity. The conductivity plays very important role. We have seen case of different types of water. What is the different type of water? Distilled water. We have looked at different waters. Rain water, distilled water. Fine. Ultra treated water. What me? What do you mean by all these things? What is the difference between all these types of waters? Some ions you are removing. Some ions you are purposefully introducing. Is it not? Let us say for example high alkaline water. What means the high alkaline waters? That means the alkalinity is more. That means presence of alkali metals is more. Presence of more sodium ions of fluoride ions. Whatever may be the case. Examples. That means the environmental factors play prominent role in corrosion. So if more chloride ions are there, let's say example of sea shows. So these ionic species, not only they will act as oxidizing agents, but on the other hand, they will increase the ionic movements. The conductivity, they, they will make the conducting, they will give the conducting parts. That may be the conducting part, may be the ionic conducting part or the electronic conducting part. So look, let us look at some different conditions. Look at this uh, content. So uh, maybe I can give you for example Uh, resistance of common electrolytes. Look at the contents. C classification. Look at the things here. See, I have given uh, one set of classification where the electrolyte resistivity I have mentioned and I have given the clearly the anticipated corrosivity. Look at the values. Let us say in case of low resistance or I can say the resistivity is almost 0 to some 2000 ohm centimeters. Now look at the anticipated corrosion. I have written severe. Now how do you interpret this? See the resistivity is such low means what? What about the conductivity? Because resistivity and conductivity are inverse relation. If resistivity is low means conductivity is high. So if the conductivity is high means what? Conductivity is high means that means electronic conductivity may be high or ionic conductivity may be high. Whatever it may be the conductivity high means what in our case, in our case of corrosion. Corrosion will be severe or less severe? 
severe, is it not? See, in my case, for the corrosion to took place, I need electronic movement. Is it I need electron movement or not? If I, if this is my nail, the electrons that are left from the surface has to reach this surface. Is it not? So electronic movement I need. That means conducting path I need. Similarly, H plus ions conducting path I need. So the first case where the resistivity is low means conductivity is very high. Conductivity is high means corrosion is severe. Okay. So look at the second case, medium. Around some 2000 to 10,000. Look at the anti-spectral corrosion, moderate. Look at high. 10,000 to 30,000. The corrosion is mild. Look at very high. The resistivity is almost above 30,000 ohm centimeters. So if the such high resistivity is there, what about the conductivity? Very less conductivity. Very less conductivity means corrosion. Very low. Increasingly less. Increasing less means very low. That means what? I should presume that always my electrolyte resistivity should be very, very high. Electrolyte resistivity. That is what the role of electrolyte in case of sodium chloride. That sodium chloride is sodium chloride is highly oxidizing, highly giving the conducting power. That means low resistivity. That's why the corrosion is faster. But if I took any electrolyte where the resistivity is almost very, very high, that means very, very low conductivity, I can see very low corrosion. Is it not? So I have given uh, some more content on the form of a table where you can look at uh, on the seashore or on the humid environments. Yes, look at open sea, sea water, near coastal area, river water, take tap water, take rain water, take distilled water, take pure water. Take all these cases and look at the resistivities in the own sediments. Mm, to analyze now, in which case the corrosion will be faster. So if you look at open sea, very low resistivity. Very low resistivity. Very low resistivity means very high conductivity. Very high conductivity means high corrosion. That's why I'm saying in open sea or near seashores, if you try to fabricate, if you try to install any any equipment or buildings which are more on uh, material of iron, then they try to get corroded very fastly. So it, it is better not to design nearer to the open seashores because of this. Is it clear now? Okay. Now we look at here the environment. It's a dry environment or marine environment or humid with other agents. Look at the corrosion rates. See, usually I will talk about later the units of mm per year, millimiles per year. We will talk about the units of corrosion later. But look at the corrosion rates. In case of dry environment, the corrosion is 0.001. In case of marine environment, 0.02. In case of humid with other agents, it's 0.2. That means what? If your if your environment is dry, what do you mean by environment is dry? No water. No water. No other species. It's almost dry. So where is the uh, um, the proximity or the rate of corrosion to took place? So very very low value of corrosion rate. But look at the case of marine. Look at the case of humid with other agents. That means already humidity is there. What do you mean by humidity? Presence of water molecules. Fine. So there is certain proximity of your uh, vapor state uh, water molecules are available. So humidity is there something. Plus other agents. 
other agents like chloride, sulfide, peroxide, or fluoride. Fluorine is also highly oxidizing agent. If you have such a type of oxidizing agents along with the humid conditions, gone. You will be ended with high values of corrosion rates. So these should be taken into account when you are designing anything. So make sure that you are out of seashores. Make sure that your environment mostly dry. Okay. So we will talk about all these things in unit number 4 where we, where we design the things. When we try to erect, when we try to fabricate, we have to follow certain principles because in order to combat corrosion. As I said in the first class, you cannot stop corrosion. But you can take preventive measures, you can combat, you can take some steps. So in the design also, we have to take these things into account. Fine. Yeah, we discussed about this heritage and cell condition. Uh, maybe I can, can uh, uh, talk about uh, one specific case. Yes, this is the case I want to discuss so that which will give direction of the electrical uh, EMF series, electromotive. So what is this is, look at here I have taken two cases. There is a beaker, fine. In that beaker, I, I dipped two metal surfaces, one is iron metal surface, other is copper metal surface in the respective solutions. That means iron in Fe2 plus solution, maybe Fe ferrous sulfate, let us assume. Iron between FeSO4 solution, copper between copper sulfate solution. So if I dip in copper sulfate solution, means there is plenty of Cu2 plus ions available. If I dip in FeSO4 solution, means there is a plenty of Fe2 plus ions available. So let us dip iron in Fe2 plus, copper in Cu2 plus solutions. Then connect these two with an external wire with some voltmeter. That is the step number one or case number one. Now look at the case number two. Iron dipping in Fe2 plus solution. Zinc different zinc solution. Now look at what is happening with these two cases. Clearly understand the case number one. See. Two electrodes between two respective solutions with one molar. The, that means the activity I am taking it as one. With some barrier or a membrane. Membrane we want for the passage of ion. Now, if you understood clearly the reading of voltmeter, something we observe to be 0 0.78 for the case number one. Now look at the case number two. Fe between Fe2 plus zinc different zinc sulfate solution. If I observe the voltage value across the terminals connected with a wire, I observe around some 0 0.323 volts. Now clearly see the case number one. In case number one, what is trying to be converted? Clearly see iron or copper. What is corroding there? If you look at the first surface, let us say this is the surface. So, dotted line sign, that means this is the metal bar. This is the metal bar iron. And this much of part of iron is removed off and only this much part is left. Because iron is losing two electrons to form Fe2+. That means clearly iron is getting corroded. Look at the case of copper. Copper rod is here, but I have given some more diagram. That means some more mass is coming because actually the bar is this much only. But this much of mass is formed on the copper surface. That means Cu2 plus ions forming Cu metal deposition. That is also oxidation, I told you. That's of oxidation. So Cu2 plus losing two electrons to form Cu. That means Copper is depositing on the copper surface. 
Is it clear the two specific cases? In case number one, iron deprin Fe2 plus solution connected with a wire to a copper rod deprin the copper 2 plus ion solution, which are all of one molar in order to make activity to be one. Now, after dipping, I observed peculiarly the voltmeter value to be 0.78. And then quickly iron is getting corroded, but copper is not. Copper instead getting deposited. There is some copper ions are getting deposited on the copper surface. That's why the mass is more here. Before it was this rod only, but after some time, I can see some more surface deposition of the copper. That's why I have kept like this. So this much portion of mass is deposited on the copper surface. Clear? Case number one. Look at the case number two. This is the iron rod. This is the zinc rod. Now you see clearly in this case number two, what is going to be corroded? What is going to be corroded? Look at here. Zinc is initially this much rod. Losing this much of mass. Because zinc is losing two electrons to form zinc 2 plus, so this much of mass is lost. But whereas iron, this is the initial shape of the rod or bar, but after some time, this much of mass of iron is accumulated from the surface. So some iron atoms are deposited on the iron surface, but zinc is losing electrons, that means zinc is getting corroded. So, case number two, zinc is getting corroded. Case number one, iron is getting corroded. Now, you understand clearly these two specific cases. If you observe clearly, in both the cases, I have connected iron with different metals. In first case, I have connected iron with copper. In the second case, I have connected iron with zinc. In case number one, Iron is getting corroded, but in case number two, iron is protected, not corroded. Instead of that, zinc is getting corroded. Now, this gives us igniting ideas, igniting ideas that iron can be protected. Is it not? If I connect iron with copper, it is going to be corroded, no doubt. But if I connect same iron with a zinc, Iron is getting protected instead of the zinc is getting corroded. So it gives some igniting ideas and minds that iron can also be protected from the corrosion until and unless I have to connect with the suitable metal. If I connect with copper, corrode. But if I connect with zinc like metals, iron can be safely protected. Now, with these things, they got idea what is this potential values because the difference in potential values make materials to get behave differently so what is the potential value in that case 0.78 in this case 0.303 these are called electrode potentials now we need to understand standard electrode potentials so called as e naught standard electrode potentials e naught and I will tell you about the, the definition or formation or what is the background of the standard electrode. For the time being, understand the physicist or electrochemist, they have developed a series called EMF, Standard Electromotive Force Series. In that series, they have written the reactions in a sequential pattern where the Z0 values starting with highest value to the lowest value. I can show you the slide first, then we will go enter into the other parts. Yeah, this is what the definition of electrode potentials. Now look at here, I have just given some example here. 
not all metallic materials oxidize to form ions with the same degree of case. Consider the electrochemical cell series as shown in the figure. We will look at the figure. On the left hand side, there is a piece of pure iron immersed in the solution of Fe2 plus. That's what the example we have discussed. But in the case, the copper, copper is getting deposited. And then ultimately, we have understood what is getting corroded and what is getting not corroded. Now, uh, uh, let, let us go directly to the EMF series, okay? I'll discuss uh, this part, uh, the what, what exactly the standard half cell and all these things, notations. But we will discuss about the EMF series. Yeah, I, I discuss about this example and then this reference electrodes at a later part. Let's quickly come to the EMF series. Yes, so this is the standard EMF series. Uh, okay, yeah. Is it visible? Is it visible? Uh, maybe I can read out some of the reactions and then I'll show the other slide. Look at the first reaction, F2 plus 2 electrons to form 2F minus. This is the E0 value in volts. What is the value? Around some 2.87. That is the standard electrode potential of that reaction. What is that reaction? F2 plus 2 electrons giving us 2F minus. So what is that reaction? Is it reduction reaction or oxidation reaction? Reduction reaction. That means this potential is called standard reduction potential. This series is designed in such a way that this standard reduction potentials are in the decreasing trend. Look at the values 2.87, 1.8, 1.7, 1.5, so on. You will get some zero for the standard hydrogen electrode. Look at the standard hydrogen electrode. 2 H plus plus 2 electrons giving rise. H2 is the standard hydrogen electrode. That is the notation we will follow and I will discuss about this SHG or NH in a later part. And then after 0, we will see some negative values. So, we draw in the, from the positive to the 0 and then to negative. That means in the decreasing trend. Now, we have an equation called nonst equation. Talk about delta G versus E0. There is, will be a relation between delta G and E0 and what is the relation I will tell you at this point of time. Delta G is equal to minus N into F into E0. Delta G is equal to minus N into F into E0. Where N is, I will talk about number of electrons or something else and the F is the Faraday's constant. E0 is the standard reduction potential. Time being, take it granted that equation. We will derive that equation later part, but for the time being to understand some of the important concept in, in iron in one case uh, corroding and iron in other case uh, protecting. In order to understand that, I am just discussing about this example of EMF series. This is the E0 value. And if I calculate delta G for this case, what could be the delta G? Because I have given the equation, delta G is equal to minus N into F into E0. My E0 is plus. So what could be the delta G? Minus N some value into F some constant value into E0 is plus. So ultimately I am ending with negative sign. So delta G negative means spontaneous. So that means this F2 plus 2 electrons giving rise F minus is spontaneous. That means what? That means what? F2 fluorine will quickly take two electrons to form F minus. These are spontaneous. That means 
accepting electrons for the fluorine is spontaneous. So whenever fluorine is there, it tries to quickly take two electrons from the species which is nearby and form F minus because that is spontaneous as per thermodynamics. That's why F2 is called highly oxidizing agent. What is the tendency of oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agent. So it tries to oxidize. How it oxidizes? It pulls the electrons. It pulls the electrons. That's what it acts, accepts the electrons. It pulls the electrons from the species nearby and get oxidized. So F2 always be in F minus state. Why F2 is always in F minus state? Because F2 plus 2 electrons gives us F minus is thermodynamically spontaneous. Because the E naught value is plus. So if I calculate delta G, supposed to be I'm getting negative because delta G is equal to minus N into F into E naught. So this reaction is spontaneous. So which reaction is spontaneous? F2 plus 2. That means what? F2 always be in F minus state. If, if, if I, in this room, let us assume in this room, if I just leave fluorine gas to you. Now, after some time, there won't be any fluorine. All will be in the F1 states. Because this fluorine which are left in this room will capture the electrons near and by whatever the species available. It tries to capture the electrons from that species and free to be in F1 states because this is spontaneous reaction. That's why these are called, if you look at the ending, increasing strength of oxidizing agent. That means this is the highest oxidizing agent. Highest, highest. That means if you look at from the down to top, fluorine is the highest oxidation. Now look at the other examples. Cobalt, hydrogen peroxide, oxidizing gas, manganese oxide. You look at chlorine, oxidizing gas. So always chlorine to be seen. Look at the reaction. Chlorine, Cl2 plus 2 electrons forming 2 Cl minus is also positive value. So delta G negative. So that's why chlorine is also highly oxidizing gas. We will use as a bleaching powder. So, in this series, the top of the column are highly oxidizing agents. If you look at the down trend, increasing strength of reducing agents. That means, down the column you can see reducing agents. Look at the down element. Li plus plus electrons giving us Li with minus 3.05 value. That means what? If I calculate delta G, Positive. That means non-spontaneous. But you look, but you look at the reverse of this reaction. That means Li plus plus electrons giving Li is non-spontaneous. But if I just reverse Li to form Li plus plus electrons will be plus value. If it is plus value, that does will be that means what lithium always to be in lithium always to lose electrons with Li plus. So you look at the iron case. Iron case, case of iron, where Fe is yes, maybe Fe gives rise Fe two plus plus two electrons. I can show you the other part. Yes, yes, here. Yes. Fe two plus two electrons. See, Fe two plus plus two electrons giving Fe is almost negative value. So delta G is positive. That means non-spontaneous. But look at the reverse. Fe to give rise Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons. So Fe always wants to lose electrons to form Fe2 plus. That's what we have studied. Is it not? Reverse of a reaction. So down the column all are all reducing agents and up the column are all oxidizing agents. So there are a lot of signs involved in this series. We will talk a little bit in later classes. But uh, maybe I will continue because in the next class I will continue. We need to look at each, each reaction a little bit in detail. Because that will help us to understand the electrode potentials. And why iron is getting corroded in one case. Why iron is getting protected in other case. Okay. So let me stop here. Right? We will continue in the next class with understanding about the CMF series again.
because I'll again talk about the series. Particularly, I'll talk about few cases, few examples. We'll discuss. Okay. So meanwhile, can you give the attendance? they will respond maybe today because I talk with vice president directly uh, because as such uh, we we get some one of my student was actually left from that JSW he has in now Mumbai so he has mailed me and he has given some vice president number I have talked to him also I have given the letter and uh, let's wait for today probably today I will get an email otherwise I will talk to him directly so if you get permission by this Saturday, because I have written a date also for this Saturday for the industrial visit, maybe that JSW steals or with some ultra tech your CR has given. If you could able to get that visit part done. Otherwise, today I'm giving these slots of seminar topics for your class because that carries some marks here. And we are going with the seminar on this Saturday. 
either with seminar or with visit so you have to prepare for seminar also by the time if you won't get permission for the visit you have to go for the seminar so for the seminar which consisting of marks of 50 i will categorize i will give the template also because as such you cannot present whatever content you want i will give the template with the template only you have to present the content with the topic i have given you have to keep the content in that template of ppt i will share that also to all of you so everyone will get one topic you prepare for the topic in the template given only in the model and then present on the saturday everyone will get some eight minutes time for presentation two minutes for the query so 10 minutes waiters of 50 marks so i will give the waiters marks of 50 also how i give so for the presentation for the technicality the novelty or whatever it may be that rubrics and that also i will share to you because in order to score good marks you should know the rubrics fine so rubrics i will share with you the template i will share with you the topic i'll share with you by today evening so that is one part of your curriculum other part if you will get the visit permission no doubt you will go on saturday only fine and this presentation will be postponed to the next saturday if not you have all have to be ready for the presentation on Saturday. Is it clear? So inform to your all classmates because I'm seeing very less attendance all the time. And in fact, I'll